Albrecht Rischel the 25th of March 1822 to the 20th of March 1889 was a German Protestant theologian Starting in 1852 Rischel lectured on systematic theology According to this system faith was understood to be irreducible to other experiences beyond the scope of reason Faith he said came not from facts but from value judgments Jesus divinity he argued was best understood as expressing revelational value of Christ for the community that trusts him as God. He held the Christ's message to be committed to a community. Biography Rischel was born in Berlin. His father, Georg Karl Benjamin Rischel (1783–1858), became in 1810 a pastor at the Church of Saint Mary in Berlin, and from 1827 to 1854 was general superintendent and evangelical bishop of Pomerania. Albrecht Rischel studied at Bonn, Halle, Heidelberg, and Tübingen. At Halle, he came under Hegelian influences through the teaching of Julius Schaller and Johann Erdmann. In 1845 he became a follower of the Tübingen school, and in his work Das Evangelium Marciens und das Kanonische Evangelium de Lucas, published in 1846 and in which he argued that the Gospel of Luke was based on the apocryphal Gospel of Marcion, he appears as a disciple of the Hegelian New Testament scholar Ferdinand Bauer. This did not last long with him, however, for the second edition 1857 of his most important work, On the Origin of the Old Catholic Church Die Entstehung der alt Kirch, shows considerable divergence from the first edition 1850, and reveals an entire emancipation from Bauer's method. Rischel was professor of theology at Bonn Extraordinarius 1852, Ordinarius 1859 and Göttingen 1864, Consistorialrath also in 1874, his addresses on religion delivered at the latter university showing the impression made upon his mind by his enthusiastic studies of Immanuel Kant and Friedrich Schleiermacher. Finally, in 1864, Rischel came the influence of Hermann Lotz. He wrote a large work on the Christian doctrine of justification and atonement, Die Christliche Lehre von der Rechtfertigung und Versoning, published during the years 1870-74, and in 1882-86 A History of Pietism, Die Geschichte des Pietismus. His system of theology is contained in the former. He died at Göttingen in 1889. His son, Otto Rischel, was also a theologian. Theology Rischel claimed to carry on the work of Luther and Schleiermacher, especially in ridding faith of the tyranny of scholastic philosophy. His system shows the influence of Kant's destructive criticism of the claims of pure reason, recognition of the value of morally conditioned knowledge, and doctrine of the kingdom of ends, of Schleiermacher's historical treatment of Christianity, regulative use of the idea of religious fellowship, emphasis on the importance of religious feeling, and of Lotz's theory of knowledge and treatment of personality. Richel's work made a profound impression on German thought and gave a new confidence to German theology, while at the same time it provoked a storm of hostile criticism. In spite of this resistance the Richelian school grew with remarkable rapidity, with followers dominating German theological faculties in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. This is perhaps mainly due to the bold religious positivism with which he assumes that spiritual experience is real and that faith has not only a legitimate but even a paramount claim to provide the highest interpretation of the world. The life of trust in God is a fact, not so much to be explained as to explain everything else. Richel's standpoint is not that of the individual subject. The objective ground on which he bases his system is the religious experience of the Christian community. The immediate object of theological knowledge is the faith of the community, and from this positive religious datum theology constructs a total view of the world and human life. Thus the essence of Richel's work is systematic theology. Nor does he painfully work up to his master category, for it is given in the knowledge of Jesus revealed to the community. That God is love and that the purpose of his love is the moral organization eye of humanity in the kingdom of God. This idea, with its immense range of application is applied in Richel's initial datum. From this vantage ground Richel criticizes the use of Aristotelianism and speculative philosophy in scholastic and Protestant theology. He holds that such philosophy is too shallow for theology. Hegelianism attempts to squeeze all life into the categories of logic, Aristotelianism deals with things in general, 
and ignores the radical distinction between nature and spirit. Neither Hegelianism nor Aristotelianism is vital enough to sound the depths of religious life. Neither conceives God as correlative to human trust. Cf. Theology und Metaphysik. But Ritchell's recoil carries him so far that he is left alone with merely practical experience. Faith knows God in his active relation to the kingdom, but not at all as self-existent. His limitation of theological knowledge to the bounds of human need might, if logically pressed, run perilously near phenomenalism, and his epistemology we only know things in their activities, does not cover this weakness. In seeking ultimate reality in the circle of active conscious sensation, he rules out all metaphysic. Quote dot. Indeed, much that is part of normal Christian faith, e.g. the eternity of the sun, is passed over as beyond the range of his method. Ritchell's theory of value judgments. Werther Thiel illustrates this form of agnosticism. Religious judgments of value determine objects according to their bearing on our moral and spiritual welfare. They imply a lively sense of radical human need. This sort of knowledge stands quite apart from that produced by theoretic and disinterested judgments. The former moves in a world of values and judges things as they are related to our fundamental self-feeling. The latter moves in a world of cause and effect. N. B. Rischel appears to confine metaphysic to the category of causality. The theory as formulated has such grave ambiguities that his theology, which, as we have seen, is wholly based on uncompromising religious realism, has actually been charged with individualistic subjectivism. If Rischel had clearly shown that judgments of value enfold and transform other types of knowledge, just as the spiritual man includes and transfigures but does not annihilate the natural man. Then within the compass of this spiritually conditioned knowledge all other knowledge would be seen to have a function and a home. The theory of value judgments is part two of his ultra-practical tendency, both metaphysic and mysticism are ruthlessly condemned. Faith knowledge appears to be wrenched from its bearings and suspended in mid-ocean. Perhaps if he had lived to see the progress of will psychology he might have welcomed the hope of a more spiritual philosophy. Topic. Illustrative examples A few instances will illustrate Ritchell's positive systematic theology. The conception of God as Father is given to the community in Revelation. He must be regarded in his active relationship to the kingdom as spiritual personality revealed in spiritual purposiveness. His love is his will as directed towards the realization of his purpose in the kingdom. His righteousness is his fidelity to this purpose. With God as first cause or moral legislator, theology has no concern, nor is it interested in the speculative problems indicated by the traditional doctrine of the Trinity. Natural theology has no value save where it leans on faith. Again, Christ has for the religious life of the community the unique value of founder and redeemer. He is the perfect revelation of God and the exemplar of true religion. His work in founding the kingdom was a personal vocation, the spirit of which he communicates to believers. Thus, as exalted king, sustaining the life of his kingdom. His resurrection is a necessary part of Christian belief GX, pp. 198-99. Divinity is a predicate applied by faith to Jesus in his founding and redeeming activity. We note here that though Rischel gives Jesus a unique and unapproachable position in his active relation to the kingdom, he declines to rise above this relative teaching. The two nature problem and the eternal relation of the Son to the Father have no bearing on experience, and therefore stand outside the range of theology. Once more, in the doctrine of sin and redemption, the governing idea is God's fatherly purpose for his family. Sin is the contradiction of that purpose, and guilt is alienation from the family. Redemption, justification, regeneration, adoption, forgiveness, reconciliation all mean the same thing the restoration of the broken family relationship. All depends on the mediation of Christ, who maintained the filial relationship even to his death, and communicates it to the brotherhood of believers. Everything is defined by the idea of the family. 
The whole apparatus of forensic ideas, law, punishment, satisfaction, etc., is summarily rejected as foreign to God's purpose of love. Rischel is so faithful to the standpoint of the religious community that he has nothing definite to say on many important questions, such as the relation of God to non-Christians. His school, in which Wilhelm Hermann, Julius Kaftan and Adolf Harnack are the chief names, diverges from his teaching in many directions, e.g. Kaftan appreciates the mystical side of religion, Harnack's criticism is very different from Ritchell's exegesis. They are united on the value of faith knowledge as opposed to metaphysic. Topic bibliography The Christian Doctrine of Justification and Reconciliation. Edinburgh, T&T &T Clark, 1900. Die Christliche Lehre von der Rechtfertigung und Versoning. Bonn, Marcus, 1882. Geschichte des Pietismus in der Reformierten Kirche. Volume 1 of the Geschichte des Pietismus. Bonn, Marcus, 1880. Geschichte des Pietismus in der Lutherischen Kirche des 17. U. 18. Jarunderts. Volume 2 and Volume 3 of the Geschichte des Pietismus. Bonn, Marcus, 1884-1886. Die Entstehung der Altkatholischen Kirche, eine Kirchen und Dogmengeschichtliche Monographie, 2nd ed. Bonn, Marcus, 1857. Gesemelt Azots. Freiburg, Moore, 1896. Topic notes Topic References This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Rischel, Albrecht. Encyclopædia Britannica. 23 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. pp. 367-368. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Herbermann, Charles, ed. 1913. Richlianism. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton. Topic further reading Barth, Carl. Richel, in Protestant Theology from Rousseau to Richel. New York, Harper, 1959. Ch. 11, pp. 390-398. Garvey, Alfred E. The Richelieu Theology Critical and Constructive, an Exposition and an Estimate. Edinburgh, T&T Clark, 1902. Jodick, Darrell, ed. Richel in Retrospect, History, Community, and Science Augsburg Fortress Publishing, 1995 Mueller, David Livingstone. An Introduction to the Theology of Albrecht Rischel Westminster Press, 1969 Richmond, James. Rischel, A Reappraisal, A Study in Systematic Theology Collins, 1978 Rischel, Otto. Rischel, Albrecht Benjamin, in New Schaff Herzog Encyclopedia of Religious Knowledge, Vol. 10 New York, Funk and Wagnalls, 1911. pp. 43-46. Swing, Albert T. The Theology of Albrecht Rischel. New York, Longmans, Green & Co., 1901. Zockhuber, Johannes. Theology as Science in Nineteenth-Century Germany, from F. C. Bauer to Ernst Trolch Oxford University Press, 2013. 